the tea? What's 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 the tea? If I die, no I live the missing bullets. I see I I know everything is shining on this gonna be cold. I'll be fine, forget it. I'll be good. I'm on the pursue I have I know everything is shining on this gonna be cold. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the weekly energy reading. I am the Water Bear, and welcome to the Water Bear's Tea, and I am so excited to start this week, okay? Um, I was excited to start this weekly energy reading, but I literally was turning up in here for like an hour, and that was not planned, okay? So the people who wanted the video Sunday, I literally had it, I wanted, it was going to come out at like 9 p.m. on Sunday. But the music, something about the music right now, I just was turning up for like a good hour. Okay, so I'm back, all right. Um, sorry for the delay, the slight delay. Um, hopefully you're enjoying this Venus energy as well. I'm sorry, not just Venus, but it's this Leo energy. Okay, that's my opposite sign. Um, I really vibe with Leos, okay? And so it makes me kind of lit. Fiery energy is something that I don't have a lot of in my chart. Um, actually, none. I don't have any fire. <laughs> Zero percent fire. So when fire energy comes, Aries season, the moon's in Aries, plants are in Aries, Sag or Leo, it like fuels me. I get so much more energy, so much more fire, okay, that I don't naturally have. I mean, I ha clearly you know I have it, um, but it's in more of an airy way, okay? So I feel more internally lit during this fire season. So we have all these planets in Leo now. Um, we talked about this this week. Mercury's going to move into Leo as well and join the party again. He was there. He retrograded back, and now he's going to hop back on in, okay? Um, and so it's just a lot, all right? And I'm just feeling all the fire, okay? So um, turning up, as usual. Um, and that's kind of this week, okay? It's the pursuit of happiness is what I am theming this week. Um, and that's why I wanted to bring in this song. This is like my high school. I remember, like, applying for college to listen to this song, like, graduating this is my graduation song this and the shows go the show goes on by lupe fiasco okay graduation songs okay um and so it just kind of took me back and then i started like listening to other songs and then it just was a lot posting on instagram past videos i ended up on instagram looking at old dance videos from the past like but we're back mercury's still in cancer so it's a lot of past reflection going on even though mercury's moving direct still cancer which is nostalgic past things okay um so i'll just get my life cancer also is ruled by the moon and that rules vibration so music is really connected with cancer so i guess that's why i'm still turning up i'm mercury ruled so he's in cancer i don't know okay but anyways pursuit of happiness is the theme all right this is the week from august the 5th through the 11th and what i really see is you know starting and i believe it was november of 2018 it might have been october 2018 i'm not exactly sure i have to go back Shoot, it might have been September, but it was when Jupiter moved into Sagittarius, okay? I think it was November of, yeah, November of 2018, okay? Should always go with that first thing. I, You know, that's what they always say in testing or whatever. Um, and Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. He's home. He's dignified here. He's full of energy. He got revitalized after 12 years of going around the Zodiac. He's now back in Sagittarius where he rules, and he's very powerful, okay? Um and so from about November until April of this year, it was a major push forward and an expanding and what we see for ourselves. Just think back to October of last year, you know, and how much you have expanded on where you want to go, expanded on your dreams, expanded on um, so many things. OK, your mindset, um, your heart has expanded so many, depending especially on where Jupiter is in your chart, um, that will really show, you know, not your natal chart, but well, that as well. But really, where Jupiter's transiting in your house, how, like which house it is, you know, what's going on with Jupiter, you really be able to tell what Jupiter's doing for you, okay? Um, 
But regardless, it, its energy is here and it's expansive and it's pushing us forward. Jupiter is about schooling. Um, so many people I know are, are getting back into school, um, thinking about studying new things. I've been studying so many new things since Jupiter moved um, into um, Sagittarius in November. I'm a ninth house moon anyway. And so my North Node's in Sag, so I'm always studying some something, okay? But I have seen that a lot with a lot of people, all right? My sister literally just sent me an email like, hey, could you be one of my references? I'm applying for a master's uh, program. I'm like, okay, like, this is it. This is that energy. This is Jupiter's here to, he's about higher knowledge, higher learning. And through that, you gain wisdom, you gain experience, you gain um, insight and truth. And that's what Jupiter rules as well. Okay. So many people think about schooling. Traveling has been major, 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 um, major, major, major. Like it, it, it is, you know, so many people are, if not traveling, planning travel. Um, that's Jupiterian as well. You know, it's a bit, it's the Sagittarius is the archer. It's about the arrow and where you're going. Right. Also Jupiter is the gaseous, most expan expansive planet. So it is that expansive energy you know you can't expand in your local environment if that makes sense i mean you can definitely can but it, you growing and, and expanding and it, it, it expansion is about going to new territory you know if something's just in the same spot it's not expanding you know what i'm saying you have to go to uncharted territory and that's what jupiter is about okay um and that's another thing we're going to talk about this week where faith and optimism and um, belief are really big with Jupiter as well, because in order to get to those places and manifest those things, you must believe in yourself, believe that you can do it, and believe in it, okay? Um, and believe you can go to new new places. It's uncomfortable to go to uncharted territory, all right? It, it's, it's unknown, okay? Um, but you have that strong belief in yourself, and Sagittarius as well has that energy, that strong, okay, I'm just, I have this, this drive to expand and learn. I have this, this strong, it's a fire sign, so it's about um, your spirit within yourself. All the fire signs have got a little bit of ego because they need to, because they, they, it's about pushing, putting yourself forward. Okay, Aries is asserting yourself like in war, you know, getting things done, starting things, okay. Sagittarius is that kind of like putting, believing, it's about belief, having faith in yourself to expand and learn and preach and teach and all these things that Sagittarius rules. And Leo, which we're currently in, is this fixed energy of just being self and enjoying self, embodying self, taking care of self, okay? But it's all self with, with fire because that's, not, that, that's your spirit. That's who you are, you know? Um, so this is kind of what we're feeling now. It's not only going to be a very expansive time with Jupiter, and it has been since November, but it also has been a major faith test time, a major time of learning about belief, a major time of changing our beliefs, learning about optimism in new ways, finding new optimism, Okay. Um, big, big things. Anything else that's coming in with Jupiter I'm thinking about um, just before I go into kind of what this means for now? Um, that's about it. Okay. That's the main energies. Um, overindulgence as well is kind of a thing. So you could have been thinking about that or, um, you know, weight could have been a thing. Um, money, you know, you could be really reflecting on, especially now that Jupiter is retrograde as of April, um, really reflecting on, ooh, I may be, maybe I'm expanding too much in that area. Okay. Those are also things. Now, this week, Pursuit of Happiness, because Jupiter is going direct again, okay? We've had since April to really reflect, and whatever a, a planet goes retrograde, it's all about that internal energy, okay? Um, we're, we feel the energy different. It's, it's an expression within our psyche. And it's, 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 ooh. It, within our psyche instead of out externally. Okay. Also, pardon me, I literally turned up for an hour, so I'm, like, really excited. Okay, but that's what I always do to start the videos, but, like, my energy, I have to calm it on down. Okay, so sometimes I'm starting the video kind of like, whoo, but we're here, okay? Um, and so with Jupiter retrograde, it's a time of expanding internally, expanding, you know, let's say you, you had this dream when Jupiter was moving direct in December of, I want to be in this place, or I want to travel here, or I want to, I want to, um, teach in this place, or I want to learn this, okay? Then Jupiter goes retrograde, so it's a time of really looking inward and seeing, ooh, maybe I had a limiting belief that, you know, every time I thought about that, I couldn't manifest that because actually there was a lack mentality with that, okay? Ooh, that money I wanted, that opportunity I wanted, that job I wanted, okay, to expand on, and that didn't occur from November until April. It actually was some, some, lim some poverty mentality, you know, or... Ooh, you know, this schooling, 
you know, I have I, I have to really understand, is this really for me? Is this the best thing for me? What school should I go to? Kind of readjusting, planning those things. And so then when Jupiter moves direct on Sunday, the 11th, it's going to talk about talking about that a little bit more, of course, later on. But um, this is going to be a time we've had so much time to reflect and learn about, you know, getting ourselves ready and, and, and the ways to expand and breaking. Think about how much you have broken limitations within yourself. Um, learn more about yourself and think about, remember I was talking about expanding into unknown territory, that's also happening internally, you're going into areas of yourself that you didn't even realize, you know, things from your past coming up that you didn't even weren't conscious of you at all um, you know, going and understanding your needs even more, taking time out of yourself to listen to your emotions so many things have been occurring since April especially with Jupiter Retrograde that has made us expand within ourselves in a new way and break past things that have kept us from seeing that expansion in our reality, okay? Because that's the way things really are, the way society's written. It is, I see it, and that's what it is. Whatever you see in your life is what you're kind of manipulating Earth, okay? I need more money, let me go get a job, blah, 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 blah. Well, no, 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 okay? As above, so below, all right? Um, it's Everything happens spiritually first, because that's the beginning of everything. Before anything can manifest, this happens in the spiritual, okay? Um, within the self, okay, you have a desire, and then you decide, you decide, and then you um, dream of this desire, and how you're going to plan it out, and then you take action, and then things come in, and you work together, and then it comes in, and then you have the desire, okay, nothing in life happens, just happens, it's all kind of being co-created, and working, and manifesting within your psyche, everything, okay, and so many things happen, like, especially I love not love, okay, this is my Gemini South, but I don't want to say I love, like, looking within, like, drama and that kind of stuff, because I don't, okay? That's some past I'm working on, getting past the Gemini South node of getting all up into the drama, okay? I also have a son in the fifth, so that used to be, like, growing up, I just watched soap operas all day, because I love just, like, people and drama, okay? But anyways, an argument with someone doesn't just spark out of nowhere, Okay? Um, unless randomly, you know, in, with a stranger, but usually that's because they have something they're dealing with and have been dealing with, and then you kind of have, are like the projection of that, so they just lash out on you, okay? You're not very just like randomly popping off, okay? Usually what occurs is, let's say someone just does something and it kind of bothers you a little bit, you subconsciously, pro you know, it might trigger you or something, and you just kind of like, hmm, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, it, it festers a little bit. Okay, you might think about it. Oh, let me figure that out. And then let's say you're around that person a lot and that thing keeps happening. Then you start building more spiritual energy. You keep focusing towards that. Okay. Eventually, that's going to manifest into an argument or an, or you, you actually saying something to that person. Um, this happens in, in your body as well. Okay. Um, it's not happening now, thank God, because I've been working a lot on it. But back earlier in 2019, I had so much tension in the top of my neck. Even back in 2018, I'm even flashing back. I had a, I got a massage back in June of 2018, and she said, you need to let go of all the responsibility you're holding from everyone, okay, and all the worry and all. You're holding a lot right here. And that part of your your neck connected to your brain is like you're, you're wanting to cling tight to everything. Like, I got to make sure they're all right, they're all right, I'm there all right, and... and if anybody's, doing, you know, it's like you're constantly hyper aware of everything. She's like, you got to let that go. And she was trying to get me to relax this part, and I was not able to. Um, so it took a long, clearly now it, it's it's so much better. But that's like a year ago. I didn't realize just until just now how far ago that was, um, how far away that was. But um, what that was, that didn't just all of a sudden I woke up and it was like, ah, you know. And that happens sometimes when you sleep wrong, but I also don't think that's true. It's because... Prior to that, you were having some kind of worry or about responsibility or something, and your neck's like locked up. Um, neck tension also, let me just drop this, is um, if you're seeing things one way and you you can't like open and get new perspectives, that also happens with neck tension. It's like, it has to be this way, why is this not happening this way? Okay, when you open, you turn your neck, loosen that neck up, all right? Then you can, that, that loosening your neck up spiritually, if you loosen your neck, you're getting a wider view, okay? so. You see how it's all connected? It's not just one thing, okay? Um, and so for a long time before that June aspect of last year, I was worried a lot. My whole life, I, I've had that kind of hyper-sensitivity, hyper-aware. Um, even people, strangers on the street, like, 
even like I remember all the time on the subway if a homeless person was throwing up or sick or something. I remember I would like here hand them a napkin. Here's a water bottle, and the whole time I was on the train, I'm thinking of that person. Like, okay, what happened? Like, where are they? All right, are they gonna die? Like, do they have nobody about it. They going somewhere? Just staying here? Like, do they have any food? Like, what's going on? All that time I could be on the train thirty minutes, and my entire focus has been placed on. So I, that becomes my responsibility. I literally feel responsible for their life. Okay, and a, a little bit. I have been in some Pisces, so that's like, that's what happens. Um, but this is, you know, that kind of energy. This is why I'm, I'm what I've learned to have discernment and just kind of not fully empathetically attached to everything. Okay, but this is not about me. So I, this, this is this is what happens. Okay, this is about the manifestation of things. So this is what happens in general. So Jupiter being retrograde, we need all this time since April to work on the internal expansion get ourselves mentally prepared for what is going to occur get ourselves spiritually energetically vibrationally in alignment with what we want okay um and then jupiter is going to move direct on sunday and now we're going to have that picking up all the things that we once desired we're not going to start to see coming in and we're going to start to take action towards and start seeing steps happening because we've broken away the things that limited us within so now the things that we see the limitations in our external world get broken up. That's what I love about the spiritual. It's like, when you're doing this shadow work, when you're looking inward, when you're taking the time to like break past past situations, when you're looking at yourself and figuring out your triggers and how to deal with those, when you're valuing yourself more and wanting more for yourself, all those things are not just shifting internally, okay? It's not just, oh, I feel good inside. I have these new values I, and all these things. No, you value yourself different. So your value is shown in the physical with your material, Okay. Um, and also a mirror of people, however you value yourself, people value you that, in that way, okay? Um, years back, you know, people used to talk to me all kind of ways because I talked to myself all kind of ways. Now, no, I'm not going to talk down to myself. I'm not going to do these certain things. I have boundaries and rules for myself to keep myself up. So also I've noticed people do that around me. I don't even have to have to say anything now. Nobody's going to say anything off pocket, really, because I don't within myself, Okay. Um, I respect myself on a certain level, so now I'm seeing that respect from everybody. You get what I'm saying? So it's like every aspect. Every aspect. Okay. So anytime all this internal expansion, like I have Jupiter natally retrograde, so my entire life is internal expansion. <laughs> Always expanding, expanding, and expanding. Okay. Um, and so that's going to, I'm seeing that on my life. I'm always seeing my reality expand. Okay. And so this is what's going to be happening. This is our pursuit of happiness. I wrote down, now ready to find and attain our joys and our sad-like things. So that's travel. You're going to be planning and dreaming of traveling our entire lives, okay? And maybe since November, since Jupiter moved back in Sag, you really, really start to feel it. But we've had this retrograde, and now it's like, I, there's nothing holding me back. Now I, I can take the action. And so opportunities are start, going to start coming in as of Sunday. And then you're going to be, I'm going to see you traveling. I'm going to see, I follow a lot of y'all on Instagram, so I'm gonna be like, oh my god, they're traveling, yes, you know what I'm saying? Because this is what's happening, okay? People who've gotten readings with me, and I've been listening to and, and discussing, and we've been going over your desires and your manifestations, and, and where you see yourself, and you know what action, what route to take. That's Jupiter retrograde, taking time to figure out, okay, how do I need to expand? And then I'm gonna be getting so many messages, and this is what I love. I get like a, a catch up, you know, like six months later, somebody gets a, a reading, and they're in the place that we were literally figuring out. Like, it's amazing, okay? And so this is what Jupiter does. This is why I love Jupiter. He's the, the style of the blessings, abundance, all these great things, okay? Um, all the planets have really great benefits, but Jupiter, I rock with him, okay? Um, and so this is what's happening. You know, we had so long to, so long, especially the eclipse season that just wrapped up, June, okay, with Mars with through Cancer. So much time, and even let's go back even to you know February, March, April with that Mercury retrograde that occurred in Pisces. Okay, so much time to re release, so much time to reflect on what has occurred, so much time to even it's not just even about releasing, you have to first get awareness of what you need to release. We've had so many times in our life of triggers occurring, okay, and making us realize, oh, I don't want this in my life anymore, oh, this makes me feel bad, or oh, you know, this isn't the right thing for me. And then we had to figure out, why is that not the right thing for me? What is the right thing for me? Am I sure about that? Am I really sure about that? Am I really, really, like, it was so much deep deciphering, deep listening, making 
tough choices, moving into the unknown and trusting and all this stuff to get us out of those limitations, those blocks. And now we've got this new moon that just occurred, which ended that eclipse season. Okay. Mars is currently moving through Leo and wherever Mars goes, he reignites. He has this fiery energy. Mars is the ruler of Aries, which starts. Okay. Mars is initiating. Okay. Mars is moving through Leo, which is where we had all those crazy eclipses last year. And so that's igniting and getting everything going, which is that we wanted last summer. Okay. And getting things planned, getting things working for us. All right. And then we now have Jupiter going direct. Okay. So we have this eclipse season over. We've released so much limitations, blah, blah, blah. And now Jupiter expansion planet is about to move forward so that we can start to finally achieve and move these things into our life. Because the age of Aquarius, let me just peep, okay, really starts when the planets start moving to Aquarius. Pluto is going to be an Aquarius. Not Pluto, I'm sorry. Pluto's going to be, a, that's when it's really going to be popping. Okay, I think that's 2023. Um, no, that's way, no, 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 Corey. 2021, I think. I don't exactly know. I don't exactly know the date, but you can check it out. It's coming soon. That's that's soon. Okay, Saturn will be in Aquarius in 2020. Okay, and that's structure. So we're going to start structuring. You start to see little things. Start the structure of the age of Aquarius coming in, all right? Um, people starting to tear down old structures of, you know, I don't want that anymore. It's reinvention occurring. Okay, starting to move into newness. Okay, Saturn and Capricorn, to me, has been a time, really, we've had to come into. Remember I said before you let things go, you got to be aware of it. We've now become aware of structures, okay, um, the old structures. The, we're not really confused about how things are working. And, and if you are, more and more, more and more every day, more and more information is coming out, more and more teas drop, more and more spilled within your life, the collective life, global, political, everything, okay, to make us understand how things have been structured and how things need to be changed, okay. Now, when, struck, when Saturn moves to Aquarius, which is where, I'm Saturn Aquarius. A lot of people in my generation, okay, we're about to have our Saturn returns and start to push us. We're going to be the ones like, hey, all right, let's get it going. Let's get it going, y'all. All right, here we go. Here we go. Get this Age of Aquarius run, the sprint to the Age of Aquarius, okay? Um, this is this, this energy that's really starting now because we've needed all that time to release, release, release. Like Aquarius, if you don't know, rules over detachment and objectivity, zooming out, bird's eye view, Okay. Aquarius rules over the heavens, okay? Um, higher mind, okay? It's the higher octave of Mercury, right? So, um, ascension, same thing, all right? But all those are talking about things that are up high. So from that perspective, you can see down and see the bigger picture, okay? So a lot of people, times, and I've gotten this in my life, you know, it's like people have said, like, oh my God, that was, you're a little, you could be a little rash with certain things. You don't sugarcoat, okay? Because to me, it's like, look, I can already see if I say, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to go ahead and just say what it is because I can see I'm not going to, okay, if I sugarcoat and do this, then I, then I have to decide, you know, keep choosing my decisions and that you never know how they react. And then later down the line, they're going to end up figuring out the full way anyway. Okay. So let me just say it the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Or they can see, you know, um, within friendships and networks and stuff, you know, okay, this is a really great time, but you know, it's not, um, Forever, you know that kind of thing. Aquarius has this uh, this, this ability to see the, the bigger picture. We're futuristic, so we need to be able to zoom out and get out of what's happening now. Okay, um, and so with all that stuff we've been attached to those past like nine, ten, like forever, maybe your whole life, all these things we've been shedding, these old patterns, limiting beliefs, these things that bring up doubt and all these icky emotions, that keeps you stuck in the subjective how you're feeling and you know, oh man, victim mentality. We, that's why we've been releasing so much of that. And now we're moving into, okay, let me just do me. What, what brings me joy? Let me take care of myself. Let me create these boundaries. All right. Let me have true connections and really heal internal things about relationships and wounding so that I can actually have true connections with other people. Okay. Let me like get my stuff together. All right. And now that we've done that, it's now these plants are going to start igniting and moving us forward. Okay. And the first ignition is. Oh, let me not let me not sting R. Kelly. I'm sorry. Um, is Jupiter, Jupiter moving forward? Okay, um, on Sunday. All right. So I had to. I kind of talked a little bit longer than I expected about that, but I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm super excited for this because that is that's what's going down. It really is a major time of um, newness coming, optimism, um, happiness. But it and if you're not there, it's finding those things. Okay. 
Um, and that's even great. Let's say, okay, maybe you don't, you, you don't get that dream job yet, but you now have a place in faith that you've never had before. You know, you now see the world in a better light that you've never seen before. You now view yourself that way. You now expand internally and seen aspects of yourself that you've never seen before. You now know truths within that you didn't know before. That is the blessing, okay? Yes, the jobs, the cars, the money, that's great. But this is not a material. We're not here to gain the material because when we die, it doesn't come with us. So you get, that's not the point, okay? Yes, we need to survive, but like, no, okay? It's, it's what occurs within that we, that we take with us. You get what I'm saying? So this is the great things, the great moments that's occurring right now, you know? And so Jupiter, I really think, is going to be pushing us and helping us really expand. I really feel this, y'all. I don't know how to put it even more in words. I'm just really inspired, inspired by this, okay? I really feel this, guys. Um, so get inspired and express your shine. That's what I wrote down. The last thing I want to talk about, um, Wednesday and Thursday are going to be really great, okay? Now, Saturn is going to be also forming a King Kong to the Sun and Venus as they are forming this beautiful alignment to Jupiter. So it's going to be like this amazing expans expansive energy, this really optimistic, really bubbly, like Sun trine Jupiter is one of the most beneficial aspects in astrology, okay? Um, it's when, you know, it's beautiful, okay? And currently, both of them are in dignity. Okay, meaning the sun is in Leo where he rules. Jupiter's in Sag where he rules and they're forming this beautiful connection in fire. Yes. So amazing, amazing new inspiration opportunities. And I wrote exchange as well so we could be connecting with other people, shining your light and then, receive, you know, that gets you a new opportunity to expand. Okay. Um, really, really great energy. I'm super, super excited for this. Um, I was born with sun trying Jupiter the day before. So like how you feel Tuesday is how I feel. Okay. So people always, you know, notice how I'm like really lit. That's pretty much, I don't, you know, I have, I have some dark time. You know, we all, as much light as you see, there's as much dark. What is it? What are they saying? The brighter the light, the deeper the shadow or something like that. Okay. We all are dual. We have just as much light as dark. Okay. It's not about, you know, anytime you try to overgo into the light and forget your darkness, then it, it projects itself into crazy situations. Okay. I embrace my dark side as well. Okay? I got a lot of dark. All right. But... I have this extreme, like, light and, like, happiness. I always, even, like, when I was little, I remember seeing videos of just, like, me just being, like, hella chilling, okay? Um, when no one's around, even, I can just, like, sit outside for a long time and just, like, just enjoy, okay? Because I have sunshine Jupiter, all right? And so this is what's going to be happening on Wednesday. Great, great energy, okay? Thursday gets even better, okay, because... Venus is going to try in Jupiter, all right? And then next week, Venus and the Sun are going to come together, and it's going to be like, yes, okay. So, really great, really great, really great. Um, but as this is occurring, as we're having all this expansion, all this, like, opportunity, all this, all this optimism, all this faith, um, and that's one thing that's occurring. With Sun trying Jupiter, it's not just, like, amazing blessings. Faith is, like, a main aspect of my life. Like, I have to have extreme, extreme faith if you only knew. Um, and so this is going to be a major aspect, really building our faith, um, making us you know, even more optimistic about what can occur. Um, that's what I love as well about, you know, having a sun trying Jupiter, but also that what it's done to my life. It takes me a long time to lose hope, a long time, I really don't. It takes me a long time to, I have though before, because with the sun trying Jupiter, it's been building my hope, my faith, that kind of thing. So then when I connect with people, let's say they're, they're losing hope. You know, or they don't know the different options. I'm like, okay, that could happen, but also this could happen, and maybe that could happen. Oh my god, like you never know, girl. Like sometimes the world is crazy. This could happen, and somebody could call you, and then that could happen. There's so much opportunity, you never know. Okay, that is the, that's what Jupiter has been teaching me my entire life. Okay, if you saw where I started, like you're not gonna go there. Okay, but now I have so much. Okay, well maybe this maybe this is what's gonna happen. I'm, you know what? I believe this is the purpose here. Okay, this is gonna optimism let's see what happens all right and with that whatever you internally are processing happens in the physical i love dancing because it, it's instant okay i talk about this all times with my when i teach dance we'll be doing like a balance you're trying to practice your balancing on like one foot you know how to balance and on relevant or on your tip toes okay um and so that, that takes a lot of balance 
But if you do not believe you're going to balance, you will not. Okay? It's crazy. It's insane how much visualization belief works. You can really see it in dance. It's really amazing. Okay? Anytime, like, let's say before we go to the left, everybody hates going to the left because a lot of people are righties, you know, right-handed. So we work better on the right side. Our right side of our body is more coordinated. The left side, I always say, and I always hear the kids, oh, my God, we got to, do we have to do the left? Or we'll be doing pirouettes. And I'm like, okay. To the right, do two or three. The left, they're like, Can I, I'm going to do half of a turn. I can't even do one. I'm like, y'all, you cannot think like that because you're only going to do one. No, you got to go out there and believe, even if you, I don't know. There's been so many times when just the belief of it has somehow miraculously made it happen. Okay. And it, it's happened. I see a lot as well with, there's a lot of other teachers that I really am inspired by um, that bring that out in kids. They make students do the most. I've had teachers, you know, lift my leg past way where it normally can go, all right, and and but make me believe and hold it there, and I, they let go, and it's like there. And I'm like, how the hell is my leg up there, okay? Or how am I balancing this along? Because you, you, your mind is on it, okay? And your mind is, so that's the first hermetic principle. The universe is a mental Okay, so everything comes from what's happening up in here, right? So I'm just my this this weekly is expansive. Okay, this is this is a little energy. It's just going. I'm just going. I'm going. I'm going. So this was only part. It was supposed to be ten minutes. Okay, but it's all good. Now let me get. I want to bring up my favorite deck for you guys. Okay, um, I was gonna pull tarot and oracle energy, but I'm just gonna read this deck. Okay, because I just went in for thirty minutes. All right, I got other stuff to do. Okay. Um, but that's what I have for the astrology guys. Um, it's, I'm really, really excited for this, um, time period. It's now 11, 11 here. So like, this is just like, yes, okay. Make your wish. Just excitement. Get inspired guys. Get inspired. Okay. Um, I do want to mention though on Sunday, I'm going to make videos about this. Mercury is going to move into Leo. All right. I talked about that a little bit in the beginning and we're going to have Uranus going retrograde, which is the rule of Aquarius. Hey, okay. Aquarius, P.S., this means now we've been working so hard to push it forward, taking action, la, 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 excuse me, for the past six months. And now we're going to have six months of literally seeing the results of the action and watching and pulling and seeing what happens. I always notice this with Uranus as an Aquarius, okay? And this happens as well I, I, with other signs, okay? Um, comment below as well and let me know if you really feel this, but, like, except for Leos because the sun never goes backwards, okay, or cancers, it's just kind of, you're always kind of moving forward in some way, okay, uh, or things are just happening, you know, that kind of thing, but, like, my, my Virgos and Geminis, every time Mercury retrograde occurs, do you get something back from, like, the past, you know what I'm saying, like, or, or does, do things come to some kind of fruition, you get what I'm saying, do you have to put in less work during retrogrades, okay, um, Sagittarians, when Jupiter's retrograde, like, right now, okay, since April, have things been kind of occurring? Like, have you, but but since, when did Jupiter go direct last year? It might have been around August. Since From August to April, were you really putting the work, changing and, and, and shifting and doing a lot of things? And then since April, you've kind of had to kind of chill a little bit, okay? This is what I really feel, okay? Scorpios, Pluto. Pluto went retrograde, I think, in April, maybe March? No, it was April. It was April. Um, or the very beginning of May. See my dates, y'all. There's so many transits. I think it is April. Let me not, let me not, um, you know, throw off what I feel. Um, and if it's wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Scorpio, how do you feel since April? Do you feel like things have been kind of happening? You just kind of had to see what's going on. And before April, it was go time. You know what I'm saying? Capricorns, okay, since April, Saturn's retrograde. But since September of last year, where you really put in that work, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what happened. So Uranus, is about to go retrograde, so Aquarians and your Aquarius risings, just kind of now it's about to be a time of this kind of like things are going to be happening for the next six months. Literally, Uranus goes direct on New Year's of 2020. Okay, when Uranus is direct, it's about major shifts occurring and surprises happening in your life to shake you up and break you out and get you into freedom. Okay, so we've had surprise, surprise, surprise since about this time last year. Um, no, 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 I'm sorry. Since January of this year, Uranus went direct. No, I don't know. I need to know my dates a little bit more, don't I? Okay. Look when Uranus went direct, y'all. Okay. I think it might have been in December. 
of 2018. Um, because in January, all the planets were direct. Or maybe it was like, I'm hearing January the 4th of 2019 when, when Uranus went direct. I don't know. But um, I didn't plan to say that, so I don't know. But when Uranus is direct, crazy shifts occur, sudden surprises, all right? Then on to break us free. Now that Uranus is retrograde, guys, until New Year's, it's going to be a lot about us breaking ourselves internally free, okay? Um, from limitations, okay? We've been feeling that as well. All right, I'll talk about this again in another video. I'm going to make a whole new video about Uranus and Mercury going into Leo, all right? So stay tuned for that. Now, last aspect I want to pull for us so for the collective message spirit for this week, the highest good of all, I want to tap and see what do we have, what energy here. Going beyond normal. I'm telling you, expanding, okay? That's so expansive. This card is also beautiful. I love it. Number 14. 14 is also a five, okay? And that's all about breaking free from limitations and structures of the four, right? Freedom is the five, okay? On the path of life, there are deciding moments where, and this is the theme, this is kind of the energy for the week, guys, okay? Aside from pursuit of happiness. Or it might blend, you never know, okay? So I'm gonna show this a little bit, but you know the lighting. On the path of life, there are deciding moments where we can choose to go with the main, mainstream or we can dare to take a bolder, more authentic, and trusting way, even if it seems riskier or less safe. To rely solely on logic and science without incorporating the mysterious and magical is a recipe for an existence that is far too dry. The sacred rebel within our hearts will always choose a juicier approach to life. You are currently approaching such a choice point. You could say that the choice is about balance. It is less about choosing to honor either art or science, gardening or architecture, and more about in integrating all approaches so that you enhance rather than hinder your life journey. Placing science or architecture above all else kills off the rebellious heart. Steadfastly relying on logic, proof, and a complete set of plans to measure and dictate outcomes will suffocate the soul. Basing decisions on limited factors with an imbalanced measure of success is unnecessarily limiting. This approach prevents us from living freely, spontaneously, and with trust so that we can rebel against the need for things to go, strictly according to plan. My, my email randomly tries to pop up and throw things off. Sorry for that kind of slowness, okay? I mean, there's not even a new email coming up. It's just being ratchet. I'll reset that last sentence. Um... Steffously relying on logic, proof, and a complete set of plans to measure and dictate outcomes will suffocate the soul. Basing decisions on limited factors with an imbalanced measure of success is unnecessarily limiting. This approach prevents us from living freely, spontaneously, and with trust so that we can rebel against the need for things to go strictly according to plan. Oh, I always said that. Here we go. Choose to value decisions based on passion and instinct. And trust in life, which is Jupiter, okay, enough to embrace it as an adventure, Jupiter, and let it unfold as it will, Jupiter. This is a time and a place for logic, strategy, and planning and measurable outcomes. I'm sorry, there is a time to, and a place for that. These are not bad tools to have, but we must be vigilant not to worship them or allow them to quash our less rational but equally valuable decision-making tools, our intuition, our feelings, and things you know without knowing how you know them. The flowing inspirational energy of the heart may have no conceivable basis in logic or reason and still be uncannily accurate. To remain rebellious, we must not sacrifice the art of emotion, instinct, passion, and intuition for the science of logic and strict planning. On the other hand, gardening and art do provide us with a plan, albeit more loosely held. This plan still requires us to set aside time to draw upon reliable methods and prepare with certain tools. However, there is also a healthy dose of organic flow. There's a lot about you just kind of just kind of see what happens, okay? Responsiveness and trust in the creative process of bringing something to life. This leads to the cultivation of the most beautiful, abundant, and successful garden and most vivid healing art. You are being asked to stay open to the intuitive approach in your life, your work, your creativity, as well as in your spiritual journey. The intuitive approach can be likened to the method of a gardener or an artist. There is a sense of what might work where and a loose or even a detailed plan, but how the plan is carried out will depend on and respond to the flow of its surroundings. 
There is no need to control the situation, but rather a desire to nurture an idea to fruition. You may have pressures around you from the world or from your own conditioned nature to do things according to the rules, to a deadline, or to the accepted mainstream view that you need a well-thought-out plan for success in a commercial venture. However, sometimes the best plan is to do what feels intuitively truthful in the moment and to trust that you are being led towards your own growth. Adopting this approach means you have to do far less planning and far more living. It is a pure and heart-centered way to manifest your art, your life path, and your essence into practical expression in the world. It involves a willingness to be led by nature instead of trying to fit a proverbial ocean into a teacup. It is a far more intelligent it is far more intelligent to allow the ocean to be the ocean and to learn to swim in it rather than trying to cram it into a vessel that is much too small. This oracle brings you a special piece of guidance. You are moving outside of the plan. You are living on the border of what is socially accepted, and this is good. Especially saying this from the Aquarius, okay? But what they say, okay? This is friends dwelling freedom. Others might not see this, but about you, straight away. Wait, others might not see this about you, straight away. As you seem pretty normal, but that secret eccentric streak is just waiting to show itself. And maybe you are an out and proud fringe dweller, completely comfortable with this way of being. Either way, this oracle brings you the message that you now have a chance to live from the heart more deeply and expressively than ever before. As soon as happens, I'm telling y'all we're going there, yes. They want you to realize that this is a legitimate and power and a creative way to live that honors all of who you are. You can give up forcing, you can give up forcing or squashing yourself down into a very limited set of so-called desirable qualities like intellect and control. If you are yet to relate to this consciously, this oracle brings you the further message that you are going to be breaking with tradition. Perhaps not entirely, but at least in a way that is meaningful to you. This will require you to have courage in your convictions and faith in your heart's truths. This will help you and inspire others around you to step out of fear and live more freely and lovingly. You are not necessarily meant to abandon logic and intellect altogether, so don't go crazy, okay? You are to use them to serve the desires of the heart, rather than to replace its naturally spontaneous and truthful nature with controlled planning and narrow strategy. It's time to get a bit wild and let nature take its course. Say aloud, I now call on unconditional love and ask for the blessings of the heart to be witnessed and sanctioned by the great universal creator, so that I may rise above small-mindedness and use the best of what human culture has to offer in service to love. Through my own free will, so be it. Right. That is what I have, guys. Um, that is the weekly energy reading. I am so excited. Okay, pursuit of happiness is the theme. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Um, if you want a personal session, you know I'm always here. The link is below for my services. Lots there. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Make sure to like, comment, and share. And I will talk to you later. Enjoy the week, my loves.